All right, welcome back. I'm gonna go ahead and get started early. Uh, this is a work day, so let's uh, jump right into it. And I wanna start off with the uh, title of the live stream. Let's deal with that first. Because uh, I suspect that there are people in law enforcement, there are people in the dog industry, all over the world who hear what we're talking about they read your comments and they understand that we make sense so as expected there are people important people who have important jobs who are saying the same things that we've been saying however they're saying things that only we have said. And I don't like to uh, toot my own horn, but I never heard anybody else make this argument other than myself. Like, before I started to point this out, I had never heard anyone say this or point this out. I've never heard anyone challenge this narrative other than myself until I found this man's statements. Police chief does not agree that owners of XL bully dogs are the problem rather than the breed. So for the first time, we're getting a public figure I think it's fair to say that a police chief is a public figure has come out and has spoken against this narrative that it's the owner's fault. Blame the owner. You're blaming the wrong end of the leash. And I've been pulling my hair out every time they say that. It annoys me every time I hear it because I know that's a lie and I've been waiting for somebody to call these lies out and finally we have a police chief okay this article surfaced a few hours ago this is South Yorkshire right well this man's name is Dr. Alan Dr. Alan Billings, PCC for South Yorkshire, says he disagrees and that the aggression and power of these dogs is part of their allure. Obviously, we all know that. But Dr. Billings said, I've been contacted by organizations concerned with animal welfare who have told me that my concerns are mistaken. These uh, animal welfare organizations, they have said that it's not the dog that's the problem. It's the owner that's the problem. And Dr. Billings said, I don't agree. Now here's the thing, it's common sense that that's a lie because it's not even possible but anyways let's continue with his statements now this is a direct quote he said the prime minister has said that the breed will be added to the dangerous dog list by the end of the year it will then become illegal to breed sell or acquire them and those who already have them will have to register them and will only be allowed to take the dogs into public places if they're muzzled. Empirically, I don't know that it has been evidenced. Have all the incidents been examined to see if in every case there was poor training? Such empirical evidence as there is tells me something else. 
when I see the figures, the statistics of dog attacks in South Yorkshire and the percentage of XL bullies involved in those attacks, it cannot just be about poor dog training. It is also about the breed, end quote. He said that, not me. And this should be obvious. This should be obvious to everyone because we see all types of people owning these things where the, their dog ends up attacking someone. Then they'll get on the news or, you know, their face will be on the news somewhere. And they'll say, hey, this is the owner of the dog that attacked. Sometimes the owner is a middle-aged woman. Sometimes it's a young man. And everything in between. For anybody to assume that all of them so-called uh, raised the dog poorly, that is ridiculous. That's one of the most ridiculous arguments you can make. The aggression and power of these dogs is part of their allure. And we do know what, and excuse me. Now I'm continuing with a quote from this police chief, by the way. He said, quote, the aggression and power of these dogs is part of their allure. And we do not know what triggers that sudden turn from friendliness to savagery, which is very true. He also says, poor training simply compounds matters, right? I certainly wouldn't want to live next door to one. He said, we do not know what triggers these mutants and that goes for all dogs not just the bully xl we don't know what triggers these dogs and this is an irrefutable fact and this applies to every person on the planet you have no idea and i'm talking about dog lovers you have no idea when or if your dog will snap and attack you or anybody else and we all know this then he points out that poor training simply will make an already dangerous dog worse. Isn't that what he's saying when he says poor training simply compounds matters? He's saying that, hey, as soon as you acquire one of these things, you're in danger. They'll just snap and attack for no reason. And you have no idea why it's attacking. And he's saying that poor training will even make the dog more dangerous. But even without the training, even if you try to train them, they're still dangerous. This uh, narrative that training is some type of magic spell that you can cast onto dogs and magically they will never attack anyone in the future. And somehow the owner of the dog knows that it will never attack. And get out of here. You are not a magician. You have no control over that thing's brain. You don't know who it's going to attack. I don't care how good you think you've trained these things. But y'all notice, slowly but surely, you see public figures coming out saying the exact same things that we've been talking about really for years. Uh, this point in particular, I've been pointing this out well over a year now. This is one of their biggest talking points. It's not the dog, it's the owner. Blame the owner. Even though the dog is the entity carrying out the attack, the dog is doing all of the work. They're saying blame the owner for not restraining it, for not holding on.
Boy, oh boy. And they just don't get it. You know, I get tired of repeating the same common sense points. But it's only because they keep repeating the same mistakes. You know, some people will say, oh, IHD, he says the same thing over and over. No, I don't. It's just that every point I make about one case will also apply to the next. In each case, you got a dumb, airheaded nutter that does something dumb. You always got nutters disregarding the safety of children, including their own. And it just so happens many nutters do the same dumb things. So quite naturally, I'm going to get on here and oftentimes say the same thing because you have the same idiots doing the same thing. So I thought this was revealing. You know, I'm going to take a moment to appreciate this because I've been waiting for anyone you know, investigators, detectives, police chiefs, attorneys. I've been waiting on somebody to point this out because look, the thing is, it's such a common sense thing. I knew that eventually we are going to hear a bunch of people pointing this out. Over time, listen, nothing will get rid of the truth. Over time, People will pick up the truth. And the truth is, we have not ever, ever examined each dog to find out if it was trained poorly. And really, there's no way for us to find that out. The only way for us to find that out is to have had surveillance cameras installed inside of the homes of every single dog lover for the entire time they've had the dog. That's the only way to discover whether or not the dog was trained poorly because you would have to follow the dog's, the dog owner's behavior on a daily basis. You have to make sure that they're doing certain things every single day and in every circumstance. There's no way to do to find that out. So for anybody to come out and say the problem is poor owners, that is a wild guess. They're just basically blindfolded and, and throwing punches. And furthermore, that's virtually impossible anyways for the problem to be bad training. What are exactly were they supposed to train it to do? Well, to not attack. So it wants to attack naturally. It naturally wants to attack, right? But I've been getting burned up. I've been hearing people say that left and right. Three reasons why you shouldn't buy a dog from a breeder. Since they talk all this breeding. Oh, get it from a breeder, a reputable breeder. As if, uh, you know, dogs that come from breeders are magical. What's so unethical about what breeders do? Right? They breed dogs just like we breed chickens. Y'all force these farm animals to reproduce so you can have money. Breeders do the exact same thing. You breeding animals to slaughter for food, they're breeding them for money, income. Yeah. So, yeah. There are criticisms against breeders as well. And to be honest, a breeder can only do so much. They can only create so much uh, turmoil. To act like dogs are some type of computer that breeders and owners program is unrealistic. It's unrealistic. I, you know, it's embarrassing that we've entertained this, this uh, discussion for so long. 
Now I want to show y'all something here. It took me a minute to find this. I want to show y'all a statement from Faye Winter. Faye Winter. Now, what is she? Is she a movie star or something? I don't even know who this lady is. Obviously, uh, she's some type of uh, celebrity. Was she an actress? She's a television personality. Okay, okay. Well, she came out and made some statements. And the mirror shared her statements. In response to the banning of the XL bully, dog owner Faye Winter says, uh, I think it's disgraceful that we're looking to even ban the breed at all. I think if we ban the breed, we'll have bad dog owners moving on to other breeds. There is no such thing as a bad dog. Right, here go with this nonsense again. Say bad owners will move on to other breeds. <laughs> so what should we just not do nothing? Well, we may as well not not ban any of these dogs because they'll just find another dog to train. Hey, I'm tired of that one too. They'll just look for another dog. I bet you if I ban all dangerous dogs, they're not going to find another dog to train. And even if they do, it'll be like trying to train a rabbit to attack someone. Y'all just don't enact the right types of bans. But anyways, she went on to say, is there overbreeding? Yes. Are dogs in the wrong hands and can become aggressive? Absolutely. Can dogs be weapons? Yes. Do we need to license them? Yes, I think we do. And look at this. Why she said this, these nutters, they're slitting their throats left and right. She said, but we need to get to the core root of the problem. Here, let me expand this. These letters are kind of small. We need to get to the core root of the problem. And that is the owners of these dogs. Look at what she said here. You don't see loving families with those dogs that have the same issues. You see people that walk around the streets. See that? You see people that walk around the streets using them as weapons. I get criticized because I call dog lovers names. That's just the world we, we live in. People respond to insults and sarcasm. And plus, I am genuinely uh, annoyed by these people. So it's easy for me to call them dumb. But when you say things like this, don't you deserve to be called out? You're a public figure. You went public and made this statement. Don't you think you deserve to be called out seeing that this is a, an extremely dumb statement, extremely ignorant statement? Do y'all know, can y'all even remember how many stories we've uh, covered where the owners of the dog were loving, soft, gentle with their dogs. This is such a lot. Y'all remember just last year where that, that couple had their two kids killed and the mother was sent into the hospital. She was hospitalized for several days. Y'all remember that, right? They had raised these two dogs from puppies. They were bully breeds. One day, they snapped for no reason, killed both of her kids. And as she was trying to save her kids, the dog started to attack her as well. That was a loving family. What are you talking about? You're not going to tell me all of these families, all these people who own these dogs are thugs. That's what she tried to imply with this statement.
He said you don't see loving families with those dogs that have the same issues. In other words, the loving families who have this dog, the dogs never attack. They never attack anyone in the home. And she's saying that they never attack other people. That is one of the most uninformed, ignorant lies I've ever heard. And man, did she reveal how much she don't know. And this also proves an accusation that I've been making against people in general for a long time. How people will simply make things up. They'll pull something out of thin air. Knowing full well they have not gathered that information from any reliable source nowhere. Where'd you find this? Where'd you discover this, ma'am? Please direct me to the source of information that told you this, that you don't see loving families with bully breeds that end up attacking someone. That might be the majority of the attacks that we see. These bully breeds are usually owned by some loving family who come out and say that I've never seen aggression. It's been a sweetheart all this time. What in the world are you talking about? See, these nutters, they're going around the media making statements like this, and it's making them look worse. They're revealing how much of a liar they are. Yeah, I couldn't believe she said that. Like, what are you talking about? You clearly don't even keep up with dog attacks if you're going to say something like that. So why would you even point out what the owners look like when you've never truly examined the owners of these things? This is what I'm talking about. Why do liars, people who just make things up, get a whole article written about what they say? Just because she a public figure? She an airhead just like the rest of the nutters. Talking like that. But she continued. I always have to share this uh, over the top nuttery. So you don't see loving families with those dogs that have the same issues. You see people that walk around the streets using them as, and that's a lie. In fact, it seems like it's been very few street thuggish looking people with these dogs. So I don't know what she's talking about there. Say, yes, I'm definitely on board with not banning the breed. See, I don't think it's a fix. I think it's a temporary solution until I'm going to say the idiots out there find other dogs. Well, calm down with the idiots and all that type of talk, ma'am. Because if the dogs were not such violent, brain-damaged mutants, then these idiots wouldn't have any type of animal to use as a weapon. If the dogs themselves were not such uh, trash, uh, deadly organisms, nobody could use them for bad things. You see these so-called thugs, they're not going out to get hamsters and squirrels to walk around looking tough. They're getting the killer, the killers, the killing machines. And that's why I appreciate the police force pointing that out. Because these dog lovers have this habit of minimizing how dangerous the dog itself is. The dog is the one with the muscles, with the mind, carries out the attack, has the teeth, does all the work. It's only the person's job to restrain it. And listen, if I'm out in public and I see somebody walk in there bully breed and that dog tries to attack, starts barking and tries to attack me and the owner holds on to the leash really tight, so tight that the dog never touches me, I'm not going to look at that person as a responsible dog owner. That person is just as irresponsible as anybody else would be. Even if they would have let, they just as irresponsible as the person who would have lost control over the dog. Because that person who held on to the leash tight could have lost his grip. 
I just got lucky that they held on to it. So I don't even buy this idea of that. Again, no such thing as a responsible dog owner. You bringing these things out in public, you're taking the chance. That itself is irresponsible. Another thing. Now, they're talking about banning the XL bully in Ireland. How many people heard of that? This surfaced a uh, few hours ago, I think, right? Yeah, Tuesday, September 26th, just a few hours ago. Poll. Should American bully XL dogs be banned in Ireland? Oh, boy. Now, Ireland is about to get on board. We had the UK. Now, here comes Ireland. Now, okay, get ready for it, people. Now, Ireland is about to promote bully breeds. Because, again, that ban in the UK, that is not a rally against bully breeds at all. It's a big promotion of bully breeds because you're going to bring a bunch of idiots like this person, all these nutters out. And they're going to make the whole dog loving world feel bad for bully breeds. And then they'll finally go out and adopt one, just like all these shelters have been begging them to do over the past year or so. I mean, what am I talking about? Years. These shelters all over the world have been begging the public for years, please adopt more bully breeds. Our shelters are overflowing. 90% of the animals in our shelters are bully breeds. Please come adopt these things. Well, a facade like this is the perfect way to get these dogs adopted. Oh, look at the misunderstood bully breeds. No, no, let's get one for our next pet. We have to do something right. That's all this is about. This has nothing to do with safety, and they all know it. So I'm calling you bluff. Now, but anyways, we'll see if Ireland, I'm going to keep up with this. We'll see if Ireland uh, goes through with this. But they took a poll. Asking people if the XL bully should be banned in Ireland. And according to them, there was almost 15,000 votes and 82% of the people said, yes, XL bullies should be banned in Ireland. Now, to be honest with you, I believe if you took that poll here in the United States, most people would say yes. They would be they should be banned. And honestly, I think if you took the poll, most people here in the United States would say bully breeds, period, should be banned. If not the majority, I can guarantee you 82% of the population would not be in favor of keeping bully breeds legal, even here in the United States. I believe the presence of bully breeds goes against most people's wishes. Y'all remember that video where they took this giant bully breed out in public just to see how scared people were and they got off on it. And almost everybody they walked by looked afraid and got out of the way of that dog. So the truth, <clears throat> excuse me, the truth may be that most people don't want these things around. And y'all have been lying this whole time, basically. So that's interesting. Now I'm a, I'm a bookmark this website. And if Ireland does not ban the XL bully, you know, I'm going to ask why. Seeing that the UK is one of the, uh, you know, most advanced countries, everybody else should follow their example. Let's conduct a poll in every other country in the world. And let's make it for bully breeds. Huh? If we're going to ban XL bullies in the UK, they may as well do it all over the world.
Make this a global thing. I'm all for it. But sadly, unfortunately, this is all just a big promotion of bully breeds. Now, y'all remember that statement I just read from this woman in the mirror who said that we don't see loving families with those... That, she, by saying that, she totally dismissed all of the reports that came out recently. The vast majority of those dogs were owned by these mild-mannered type of people. They're usually females. I have no idea what she's talking about. But anyways, this is one of the stories that I ran across earlier today. I don't want to show this, uh, but it's, it's endangerment, okay? And the title is, I trust my American Bully XL around my baby daughter. And this is the BBC News. I trust my Bully XL around my baby daughter. And they show a Bully XL in this photo up here, laying next to a baby. This baby's so young, I don't she can't even walk yet. And this is their attempt to promote bully XLs. And this is in the BBC News. Why are you even telling us about this one? This woman is a child endangering, child abusing dirt bag with a low IQ. Just a piece of trash. We don't want to hear what she thinks. Why are you platforming her thoughts? She's a lunatic. And her baby should be taken from her. Up in the house like a lunatic. And this is, this is her. Her and her disgusting mutant. She'll be the next one on the news crying after her or her daughter have been attacked talking about how it's always been so loving the crazy thing about this is she uh had the dog right I, I, she had the dog longer than she had her baby and refused to get rid of the dog when her baby was born. She said, when my daughter arrived, we introduced the dog slowly and he was perfectly fine. He's so gentle with her and he loves her. He just licks her face. So this is not only endangerment, is it, uh, you know, face licking? That's like assault, right? You can't just spit on anybody, not today. You get in all kinds of trouble, but the dog is free to lick and spit and splash saliva as much as they want, even though their saliva is the most toxic, but okay. Okay, y'all got that disease going around in the UK that y'all have no cure for it and it can lead to sepsis and ain't that crazy? There's a disease going around the UK that they have no cure for that can lead to sepsis. We thought sepsis was only associated with catenocytophaga. No. Unprecedented disease. Oh, man, I really hate these types of articles. I hate these types of uh, stories because these, uh, the BBC should get in trouble for publishing stuff like this because it's so dangerous, so dangerous. Now, shout out to one of the members in the building. I want to see exactly who that was, who pointed out to me that dogs are banned in Maldives. Well, I'm going to tell y'all right now, I will be taking a trip 
to Maldives. One more thing before I get to that. Let me do one. Let me let me go here. I want to show you all some images from that rally in the UK against the XL bully band. Don't don't bully my breed. Muzzle Rishi. Don't bully our dogs. Blame the owner, not the breed. Now these jokers right here really have some strong Satanism vibes going. All wearing all black. They got these uh satanic color schemes. Yeah, I don't trust that at all. But what I want y'all to look at, I pointed this out before, but I didn't have the actual image to show. At that at that rally, thought it was interesting. They said, don't bring in the XL bullies. Don't bring them. And we all know why. But this is so pathetic. At that rally, y'all see this one right here? On this billboard is a baby with an XL bully alone. So just like I said, these images that we see all over the Internet, these are their favorite types of images. They get off on seeing kids and babies in danger. It's the weirdest, sickest fetish, again, which is why for a very long time, I've always associated these people with Satanists. That sounds like a Satanist mentality. Oh, a baby and a, a Rottweiler. Oh, yeah, get them closer. And you know what these people really get off on? To lay a baby down on a bully breed and walk away. The further they get away from the baby and the dog, the more they get off on it. I'm sorry, that that's psychotic. Here's another one. They had two of them. And you could probably see it. There is a flipping baby with an XL bully. Unbelievable. Unbelievable how they do the... As if, the, as if they're not even aware, you know they have to be aware that these dogs, dogs are the only creatures that kill babies. And they kill babies pretty much on a regular basis. And if you ask me, somebody's 45 years old, anybody 13 and under is a baby in my book, a 12 year old. These dogs are the only creatures that you see stabbing 12, 11, three newborns to death. And those are their favorite types of showings. They love showing a dog paired up with a toddler or baby somewhere. Y'all want to sit back and talk about me like I'm the crazy one. No, y'all lunatics, man. Flipping lunatics. Anyways. I will be making a trip to Maldives. Apparently, dogs are banned there. Okay, and that's beautiful. Look at that. People, I'm going to try to move there. When I retire, don't be surprised if I'm live streaming, streaming from Maldives. Why are they banned? Oh, yeah, let's go over there. They give eight reasons or nine reasons. Why dogs are banned in Maldives. It's beautiful. It's against Muslim belief. Now, shout out to all the Muslims who follow their beliefs. Because there are a lot of Muslims who are dog lovers. And shame on all of you. Shame on all you dog-loving Muslims. Right? But uh, this is a Muslim country. Beautiful. Look at how much you know, better, more pleasant, enjoyable, civilized, the Maldives is. 
even without going there, you can tell this is much different from these nutter societies. Avoiding rabies cases is one of the reasons why dogs are banned. And doesn't that alone make it a lot different from the other uh, countries around it? Where there's stray dogs everywhere. As soon as you step outside, there's stray dogs. I bet you a stink like no tomorrow. Avoiding rabies cases. That's real smart. Noise problems. We, we're very familiar with that. Non-stop barking. You don't have to deal with that there. Proactively avoiding stray dogs. Like I said. You don't have to deal with and stray dogs is a big, big problem. Trying to preserve a tourist friendly environment. Now, let's stop here. Isn't that a mouthful? In other words, dogs will ruin your vacation. You step off a plane, the last thing you want to do is step inside of a society full of dogs. So to make people's vacation more pleasant, they got rid of dogs. How telling is that? This is not me. Most people would think this is IHD's idea. I didn't have nothing to do with this. I just found this out. That is a mouthful, trying to preserve a tourist-friendly environment. In other words, if people come there and there's a bunch of dogs there, they're not going to want to come back. And you're exactly right. And again, this is why we need and we're going to get anti-dog areas just like this. I don't know. We should have entire states where no dogs are allowed. The fact that we don't even have cities, dog-free cities, is a shame. That's an injustice. Only police forces can have dogs, okay? Dogs can be taught to harm people, okay? They have this listed as one of the reasons why they don't have dogs there. How smart is that? Isn't that smart? We always talking about how dogs can be used as weapons. Well, nobody can use them as weapons if they're not around. They always talk about irresponsible this, irresponsible. Well, they won't have nothing to be irresponsible with if the dogs are not around. What if they going to train rabbits to fight? Train rabbits to attack? You can tell Maldives is like a whole different world. Not enough space to accommodate dogs. And look at all the money you're saving. You're not wasting your resources on shelters, on dog food, on a whole bunch of things that uh, nutter societies literally waste money on. Instead, you could redirect those resources towards yourselves, your communities, your kids, and so forth. That's a humane thing to do. Wasting those resources on dogs is inhumane. It's actually a crime against the entire uh, child population. You know, instead of using money to help uh, young people in need, you waste that money on dog food. These dumb, worthless charities catering to a worthless life, dog life. Nine, can become a big responsibility for the country. Absolutely. And again, if you're not wasting time tending to these dogs, you can use your time doing something else, something constructive that will improve society. Here in the United States, man, I cannot imagine how much more we would get done if all that labor and resources being wasted on dogs was used for our country. Then that's another reason why dog lovers are bad for societies. Because they really represent a massive waste of resources. 
you know, that could be used for something constructive. Good evening. Right off the top, we want to advise you our first report contains videos some viewers might find distressing. It concerns dog attacks over the weekend that left two pets dead and neighbors upset. CTV's Bruce Frisco reports. Yeah. Neighbors have always been friendly in this quiet neighborhood in West Bedford, but these days they're united in concern and a certain amount of fear. And everyone deserves to feel safe. And right now you looked out wow. yesterday. No. Look at how everybody has their face blurred out. Exactly. Just like they're dealing with the mafia. They're like a mob. They're like gangsters. Every single person who gets on the news and speaks against dogs, they always want to conceal their identity. Now you looked out yesterday, nobody's playing, nobody's walking their dogs. Now listen to this. I want y'all to hear what she says. Out of fear. And everyone deserves to feel safe. And right now you looked out yesterday, nobody's playing, nobody's walking their dogs. Everybody's pretty scared, right? Okay, there was a dog attack. And then the next day, streets are empty. People don't want to go outside. People instead staying inside, even if the weather's nice. What does that sound like? Sound like a community being terrorized, doesn't it? Dogs terrorize communities. Another reason why we need dog-free territory. Right now. It began just after 1.30 Saturday. Police say a small dog wandered into a shared backyard with a neighbor where another dog was nursing puppies. Described by neighbors as a pit bull, the larger dog attacked and killed the smaller one. Early the next morning, it happened again. This time caught on video. A woman walking her toy poodle named Sunny stopped to converse with another neighbor when out of the blue, a dog... Now, I don't, I don't think y'all were able to see that. This uh, video got kind of choppy. But you can see that dog coming up from behind. See? See how it just, it came from a long ways away. Came out the picture frame. Walked all that ways to come over here and attack that dog. And listen to what they said. I, I don't want to show it. I can't show it because listen to what they said though. And out of the blue, a dog charges into the picture and clamps down on Sonny, who died instantly. They say that dog that dog that was attacked died instantly. Now that's crazy. You want something like this biting on your three year old child? Yeah, you do, Nutter. If it happens, it happens, right? That's their attitude. Why would you have such a killing machine inside of your home? What if it attacks one of your kids? What if it attacks your baby? Dog lover. Oh, if it happens, it happens. But I want y'all to keep this in mind. What happened on film Honey here stopped to converse with another neighbor when that dog was not on its territory it left its territory so this is not territory aggression this is bloodthirst this is just a desire to kill this thing is doing what it was bred to do and why is it that it's usually bully breeds that just runs up on other dogs and attacks them they'll go come from a distance to attack that's showing you it's doing what it was bred to do when out of the blue, a okay, this dog just walked up, clamped down on this small dog, Sonny, who died instantly. We saw the dog that was that was killed, and the owner uh, was pretty uh, upset. One neighbor heard the commotion and bolted outside, eventually coaxing the dog to follow him home. But he sensed no aggression toward him. The dog That's because that dog views humans as food dispensers these nutters they're always trying to point out how a dog is non-aggressive they always want to highlight the moments when a dog is not attacking someone but i'm not impressed with that 
It's simply not attacking because you are a dumb food dispenser. Dog honestly just seems scared and probably instinctually, you know, he's in his, he's in his, his primal, primal thinking, right? So an untrained dog is going to attack. Oh, an untrained dog is going to attack. So you got to train it to not attack, right? Which means it's bad from the start, right? So this narrative, no bad dog, that's a lie. You finally going to admit that, right? Because you're admitting it now, basically, by saying that. An untrained dog is going to attack. So dogs in their natural state are violent. They're bad. Now, I don't agree with that. Not even training is going to make these things harmless. But y'all say a lot of things you contradict yourself. And I have to point it out. He's in his, his primal, primal thinking, right? So an untrained dog is going to attack. In a statement to CTV News, the city confirms Animal Services has one dog in custody. But because this is an active investigation, we cannot provide any further details at this time. The owners of both of the deceased pets were too upset to speak with us. Police say Animal Control is now leading the investigation. I tell you, we hid the identities of those neighbors to protect their own safety. That entire block there is rental units. They're all townhomes in Bedford. And I did speak with the landlord today who told me that he was upset about all this as anyone else. Man, please. What are you hiding your face for? I wouldn't be worried about nobody. If there was a dog attack here in my apartment complex, I would love to show my face. I want you nutters to, to know me by my face. When you see me, you better hold on to your dog extra tight. Because it, if it come after me, or if I see it attacking someone else's kid, we're going to handle that. Don't Y'all got to stop being scared of these nutters. These are low-life degenerates who are out here knowingly and willingly endangering everyone in society primarily kids who make up over 50% of all dog attack victims. We don't have to respect these dirt bags, especially these owners of large, vicious breeds. These are soulless psychopaths that deserve no respect. As it is, they get far too much respect. Society caters to these imbeciles. basically making money off how stupid they are. We're getting new details on a northeast Charlotte dog attack where a mother was injured. A report from Charlotte Metro Police said that the woman is still in ICU tonight from her injuries. Both dogs' rabies tests returned negative. Neither, though, was up to date for the vaccines. The incident happened on September 18th near apartments close to Mount Glen Drive and Highlands Drive. Officers say the owner was walking the pair on a leash when they escaped. The victim's daughter told authorities the dogs went after a kid, so she then put herself in harm's way to stop them from attacking. Y'all remember this story, right? It was, uh, it was a black lady. I believe the girl, the little girl was a black girl, and she had her arm like in a sling. Y'all remember this story? Well, this is the same story from a different media outlet, but did you hear how she described that? Listen to this. Escaped. The victim was walking the pair on a island drive. Officers say the owner was walking the pair on a leash when they escaped. The victim's daughter told authorities the dogs went after a kid. So, so you heard that, right? They're walking the dogs. The dogs spotted a child. Broke free. Went over and attacked the child. Isn't that the exact same thing we just watched right here? A mutt sees a target, potential victim from a distance and simply just walks over and launches an attack, completely unprovoked. Doesn't that show you that they will view your kids the same way they view small dogs as something to attack, just to attack? They view your kids the same way they view 
all other animals. We hear the stories about livestock. They just go through and kill them. This should be one of the reasons why they get banned. Too dangerous. We can't have creatures capable of killing in society that have an instinct to attack kids more than they have an instinct to attack anyone else. Dangerous game these people playing. And this time caught on video, oh. a woman. Oh. So yeah, I thought that was crazy. And it was, and this was just early, this was earlier this morning. I watched this one first. And it, it creeped me out. I watched this one and then I went straight to this one, not knowing that it, I was about to see or hear about the same scenario. I was going to hear about the same scenario that I just visually watched. Except here it was with a dog and here it was with a girl. So I don't want to hear nothing from these people. We got all the reason, evidence, proof that we need to ban these mutants all over the world and and not only the XL bully we got more than enough uh evidence to ban all these mutants what is this Texarkana oh got an audio let's listen to it Arkansas a woman was killed Sunday night in an apparent dog attack in Miller County Arkansas the woman identified by the Miller County Sheriff's Office as Brenda Witt of Genoa, Arkansas, was found by a family member in an old vehicle on her property on County Road 18. Authorities believe Witt got in the car to take shelter. Some of the dogs have been captured by Texarkana, Arkansas. Oh boy. How about that? Ain't that crazy? They found this woman's body in a car. Found her body in a car, an old vehicle on her property. And they believe that she got inside of the car to hide from the dogs. But apparently she was unable to close the door fast enough or hop through the, I don't know what she did. And the dogs got in there with her and killed her. This was a uh, grown woman, right? Brenda Witt. It's a grown woman. So in today's uh, news, what have we seen? We saw an attack on a little girl, right? A little dog, an attack on a little girl. And we saw an attack on oh, a woman. Little girls and kids. Dog's favorite targets. Huh? And not even that triggers the male population to get rid of these things. What a spineless group of males that must be. You know, that's all the lawmakers that have ever been involved in the creation of these laws. And it includes all the current people in law who are not saying anything about it, right? That includes right. everybody who's sitting there with their mouth shut, not speaking against this uh, filthy culture, this dog culture. How many of y'all heard these comments from Humane Society CEO Matthew Pepper? This guy, I've shared his his comments before. Y'all remember this guy? Michigan Humane Society CEO Matthew Pepper. He chimed in. Why is it every time he talks, he says something just brainless? Responds to the pit bull ban in Gross Point Shores. Yeah, I'm sure you did. And here you go, they showing a pit bull with a kitten. Oh, look, that that proves that they're harmless, right? It is. But this is what uh, 
Matt Pepper said. And again, notice how all these people, they're always getting the input of people who are in, who defending these things. Everybody that you hear from, that we hear from, should be anti-dog people. Why not? We won. Nobody care what these nutters think. A ban was put in place. We don't want to hear what they got to say about it. But the Humane Society CEO, he said, these types of bans are often considered in response to a single incident. <clears throat> and they shouldn't be. That may be true. And <clears throat> when it is a response to a single incident, that's when you really know that it's political. Because it's always a pattern of attacks. As is the case here in Gross Point Shores. He said, in the heat of the moment, it is easy to put simple answers, like a breed ban, to more complex issues. Dog attacks are not complex at all. One of the simplest things to uh, put an end to. Just get rid of the dogs. He said, in reality, every action reported can be addressed with existing laws. That's not true. That's not true. What about the one bite law? That's an existing law. What about the law that says they can't do anything until after a dog has attacked someone? Even if it's barking, lunging at people, the cops can't confiscate that dog. It has to actually attack someone. So that, that's not addressed with ex existing laws. <clears throat> Y'all remember they was trying to get that law passed to where animal control could confiscate dogs after seeing uh, violent behavior and uh, tendencies and attitudes from the dog. The dog didn't have to uh, launch an attack. And I, I believe they struck that down. So that's a lie. Every action reported can be addressed with it existing. That's a lot. And what about the people who get attacked and nothing happens to the dog because uh, that was the first time the dog attacked someone? In many states, when that happens, if it's the dog's first time attacking someone, nothing will happen to it. And especially if you're on its property, nothing's going to happen to that dog. What are you talking about? But of course he would say that as the president and CEO of Humane Society. But it's good to respond to people like this. This is an this is an important person. He said the laws simply need to be enforced. No, we'll enforce a ban. That's easier to enforce. And and don't, it, it's more complicated to do what he's talking about. To enforce these laws that keep people safe. And there are no such laws. I don't know what this guy is talking about. He said a breed ban does nothing to address the behavior or expectations of owners. Oh, boy. Pepper went on to blast the council members who voted in favor of the ban, saying they are attempting to address a hypothetical future incident as opposed to anything that has actually happened. People, I cannot believe. I could not believe he said that. Couldn't believe I had read that. That was incredible to me that he actually said that. Again, he said... They're trying to address a hypothetical future incident. It's not hypothetical. It's going to happen. There's going to be future attacks. Like, there's no break in dog attacks. This is going to happen. As opposed to anything that, that's exactly the point of the ban. 
is to stop the attacks before they happen. That's the whole point. But he got up here and argued in defense of responding to dog attacks instead of being proactive. And then look at this. Most people would prefer the law enforcement in their community to respond. No, what are you talking about? No, to respond to more pressing items than what a dog looks like. No, what are you talking about? That's a lie. People call the cops all the time when there's a dog attack underway. And oftentimes it takes the cop a while to get there. Most people would prefer the law. No, I wouldn't. I'd rather the dog not be there. That's a lie. Wow. This is how desperate they are. He hasn't asked. Have you asked these people that you're talking about? You ain't asked nobody. When you look at these polls, you see most people want XL bullies banned. So how are you going to sit there and say that most people would prefer the cops to simply come out and take care of the XL bullies whenever they call them? This really confused me this morning. Like, dude, where are you getting this? That most people would prefer the law enforcement in their community. By the time the police get there, whoever's been under attack, they're probably almost dead. If it's a kid, most likely they're dead. That's an outright lie. Most people would prefer there be nothing that attacks them. They would prefer to just go out, get their mail, and go back into their home without being... A, most people would prefer that. I don't know what you're talking about. And it's the president, the CEO of the Humane Society. Wow. He said, we will be immediately forced to identify a more inclusive community to host or whatever. This dude. Okay, that's enough from him. Boy, these people, they are making the rounds. Talking just as crazy. Completely out of their minds. There ain't no help in these people. Uh, this big facade they got going with the XL bully expected to expand into Ireland. I doubt the UK is going to be the last country to promote bully breeds. Okay. I would not be surprised if they did it here in the United States as well. They'll probably add one type of bully breed to the ban list because ultimately this is a promotion, a promotion of bully breeds. Isn't that crazy? They decide to promote bully breeds at the same time when bully breed attacks on people is higher than it's ever been. Right now, 2023, they're higher than they were even in 2019. Higher than they've ever been. And now you decide to do what? To promote them even more. Because as these dog attacks have been skyrocketing, and I would say that's been, let's say the past 15, 20 years, they've been like going up, up, up every single year. And at the same time that uh, these attacks have been going up, they've been removing bans. Dog attacks go up, they remove the bans, and then they decide to promote the bully breeds. Scary stuff. Now, I know some people might disagree, but I do not believe that lawmakers, that the leaders of our countries are that ignorant. When you see leaders ban one type of bully breed, they're not serious about safety. That it's just a political stunt. Okay, not only is it not, a, and if you're not serious about safety, then what's, what's motivating you if it's not safety? And that is when you figure out that it's just a big promotion of bully breeds. They want to gain sympathy. They want people to sympathize with these mutants 
and go out and adopt one. That's all it is. They saw the boom with Michael Vick. When that Michael Vick thing happened, ownership of bully breeds went through the roof. That, that was the same thing. All that did was make dog lovers all, of, all across the world feel sorry for the bully breed. And that's why uh, there were more bully breed owners shortly after that happened than ever before. And that's why, really, it was going up like several years after the Michael Vick thing. That helped boost the population. So what? Trying to project these things as victims of mistreatment boosts the popularity of them. Michael Vick dog fighting. Oh, that's mistreatment. That boosted the popularity. In this case, oh, you want to ban them. That's racist. That's discrimination. Boost the popularity of bully breeds. If y'all want to be serious about safety, ban all bully breeds and add to that list German Shepherds, Labs, Dobermans, and Huskies, and any other large dog that you can think of. I'm not a dog expert, so I don't know them all by memory, but get rid of every single large dog in the country. And then start working on the smaller dogs. Yeah, start working. But if they ban all the large dogs, I will believe that they're seriously trying to increase safety if they do ban all large dogs. Even if they were to ban all bully breeds, I would believe that they were making an attempt to uh, increase safety if they were to ban all bully breeds. They're not doing nothing, nothing at all. And here in the States, they're removing them. So that tells you what channel they're on. He said, just the movie. The movie. Oh, oh, I have to watch that. I have to check that out. Yeah. Shout out to everybody up in here. Doing your looks. I've been real busy lately, man. I have been so busy lately. Just nonstop. Nonstop. And as you can see, I have this filter. Wait a minute. Yeah, I got this filter for the past 24 hours. Y'all see that? Just the last 24 hours. And they're still pumping out this... Uh, bully breed stuff. Man, oh man. Now I'm exhausted. I think I'm going to take tomorrow off. Don't expect any uh, product tomorrow. I'm going to rest up. Rest my brain. I feel exhausted. You know? uh, shout out to everybody able to join me for this live stream. And I hope to see you back on the next as we continue with this crusade.